Hello beautiful beings, this is Maruma Tu and you are watching Sun Soul Astrology and this is a daily planetary translation for June the 4th 2017 and today the collective sun is going to be at 14 degrees of Gemini and the collective moon at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time 1900 Universal Time is going to be at 22 degrees of Libra so biggest thing going on today is that we have Mars transiting to zero degrees of cancer and so we are switching gears in the energies that we view as Mars. So we'll definitely be talking about that. Of course, we still have the Grand Fire Trine that with Mars included is sextiling both Uranus and Venus and Aries and also the North Node in Leo. So that's forming the kite that's attached to this Grand Fire Trine and it's adding a lot more energy to this. Mars was in Gemini, as I mentioned, which was a mutable air sign transiting into a cardinal water sign. And this, these two energies actually being a part of this kite was really adding and is adding some new dynamics and some new energy. We're moving into a bit more of a feeling zone. A bit more sensitivity could possibly get kicked up, but you know me, I do quantum astrology. We're gonna go towards the higher aspect of all things because at the basis, cancer rules the mass consciousness. And basically it rules feelings rather than reason. And whenever Mars was just going through Gemini, Gemini is that reason and thought. So this is feeling versus reasoning. Obviously, these are where this is the area that we could possibly uh, learn to control our emotional world a lot stronger. The reason that this rules the feelings rather than reason is because Cancer is ruled by the moon versus Gemini being ruled by Mercury. Mercury representing thought, the moon representing our emotions. So Mars is a very powerful planet and on a very high note, Mars is really attached to our physical vitality. It's connected to our solar plex. It's really about the relationship that we have between spirit and physical. That's also another element that Gemini does provide as the sun is moving through there. So now it's said that Mars is basically you know, the polarized version of the lower self and the higher self. And Gemini, where Mars was just transiting, is the interconnectedness between the higher and the lower self. So now that we're going to start to feel all of the things that we've been observing and witnessing, we're going to come into these stronger relationships with basically others and duality and also our sexual energy. Cancer and Mars have a lot of sexual energy attached to them and we have some dualistic qualities as well whenever we take Cancer into consideration with Mars transiting. Mars is actually at its fall in Cancer, so this is what they consider to be not as favorable as when it transits other signs, but here Mars is actually going to get a bit of a break and we are going to get a little bit more sensual and um, passionate about our feeling world and this is a good thing because cancer is really attached to all of our healing natures and our intuitions so if we can really use Mars to spice up this world in the passion department we are going to have some really nice connections that come out of this and also something that we need to remember is that Mars represents the god of war and this is something that we fight within ourselves whenever we become polarized, whenever we go into our shadow sides, or whenever we retreat into our shell and gain too much protection and don't take enough chances. That's really the kind of energy that Cancer also represents is hiding whenever it senses danger. 
And it's not always the easiest for cancers to remain open and vulnerable, whereas Mars is that energy that rules both Scorpio and Aries. So on that Aries side, it's like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I am who I am. Accept me as I am. So they don't really have a hard time showing that side and that's that Mars part of the energy. But on the other side, ruling Scorpio, it is about this process of being passionate about soul evolution through the death and rebirth process, through the transformation and the regeneration. And whenever we're going that route, we have to take chances. So if we can understand that keeping our bodies and our emotions and our minds in a very balanced nature as Mars moves through Cancer is really going to allow us to build some awesome and new relationships, tighten up some links that we have between our spirit body and our physical body, and just be really passionate about these evolutionary steps that we're taking, right? And also, Make sure that we don't get obsessed with anything in the process because absolutely there are times that the cancer energy can get pretty stuck on an emotional issue and it's only because the water signs just feel every single bit of emotion run through every piece of their body. You know, I'm a triple water myself. I'm a Scorpio sun, Pisces rising, Pisces moon. And that's 8th and 12th house energy right there for me. So it's a lot. I understand completely. And yes, it is hard to be vulnerable whenever you have so much water because you are so um, open to being hurt emotionally. But it is what we have to do. We just can't lock ourselves into emotional prisons or soul prisons. And we just have to really make sure that we, our drive for self-preservation doesn't lead us to becoming jaded and cut off so that we can actually experience this Mars moving through Cancer transit in a really profound way that's going to just heighten all of our water connections and cardinal energy Cancer is a cardinal sign, so it definitely is about getting things started. It's the marking of summer, so here we go into this vibration that the sun will follow behind. And Mars is kind of like paving the path for the sun to follow, and we're getting sneak peeks at everything that's to come. And I'm, I'm super stoked about it. I think it's going to be a lot more of a chilled out transit than Mars going through Gemini because that was just really, um, Mars and Gemini just does not want to be bored and the sun in Gemini doesn't want to be bored either. So those two energies both moving from Gemini or through Gemini was pretty uh, intense. We needed stimulation constantly. So we might have a lot of time that Aside from being overstimulated, we can really go ahead and take a break and chill for a minute, right? So let us talk about a couple other things because the sun is still trining Jupiter retrograde in Libra, which is really just a statement that we are supported by the universe. This is something that was going on yesterday as well at an exact trine. So the energy was really powerful. The sun is still in a trine, a loose trine to the moon. So this is still a continuation of those really positive energies, the moon and Libra, really connecting and sharing and exchanging good vibrations, knowing that we're supported internally in our emotional world and externally as who we are, who we're lending ourselves to be, and just know that we have a lot of luck on our side side and the moon here at 22 degrees is actually activating the energy of Spica and Arcturus. Spica is one of the 15 bohemian fixed stars. It's at 23 degrees of Libra and Arcturus is at 24 degrees of Libra. Now both of these energies are connected to starseed energy as well and also they are very positive. So this is a nice energy that's moving through the moon vibration and connecting with all of the other goodies that's in the sky. 
this moon here at this degree is going to start to form another cardinal t-square coming back but as you know the moon moves pretty quick so it's not going to be a huge influence that is going on for an extended amount of time but this has to do with the pluto uranus and venus square also it will now square the moon so obviously it's not going to be too strong or too influential in the negative energies or anything like that it's just reminding us that we are being challenged to initiate change and transformation and start something new in that cardinal energy the mutable t-square is still active it is starting to um, as Mars transits into Cancer and starts to move up in the degrees, it's not going to be as strong anymore either. It's about a five degree opposition from Mars to Saturn and Sagittarius. So we are just at the end of learning these really important lessons that have to do with being able to be mutable, being able to really transform without holding on to our past conditioning and our past programming that we're really you know, identified with ourselves to the point where we really have this trust, balance, this unity, and we're secure with everything that we need to do. Now, you know, I should mention earlier, I said that, you know, cancer is a very sexual energy, but what I should have said is sensual. It's a very sensual energy. So cancer loves to touch and feel and sense. They really like to make people comfortable and cozy and energetically resonate within their presence because they can feel the emotions of other people very clearly. And if they see someone who's uncomfortable that they care about, it actually makes them uncomfortable as well. So if we can use this Mars energy correctly in this sensual nature, this is going to be a very nice transit. Okay, so basically, I mean, that's the biggest things that are going on today. Let us see, we have another actual T-square. Yes, we do, and it is uh, also immutable. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, we've had that one going on. Never mind, just wanted to make sure I didn't forget anything. So let's get into the degree for the sun today at 14 degrees of Gemini. It is a sorcerer materializes an amethyst cross. Laws are made to be broken. Limitations are kept in place so that those who are not ready to go through radical changes and evolution will be able to locate themselves. But then there are those who cut through every limitation, break every law by the sheer power of their inner gaze, their presence, their magical will. When they cut loose, worlds that have been kept apart flood together. This is a force of awareness that seeks to bridge, to meditate, to connect, to bear messages back and forth. A mission or great task is involved. To let the future flood through and repolarize the fractured world towards wholeness, a sensibility made up equal parts, daring and skill. The daring is afraid of nothing and nobody. The skill embodies the daring actions. A perfect combination to catalyze and spark and make inevitable the cosmic forces bringing their imprint to bear upon the outer physical existence. Just as though that is what we do around here and why not? Question mark. This is a really amazing Gemini degree. Sorcerer materializes an amethyst cross. Why the hell not? And you know, amethyst is really connected to the sign of cancer. So this really makes sense as today Mars hits zero degrees of cancer. Laws are made to be broken. Uranus retrograde people. Yes, they definitely are. Limitations are kept in place so that those are not ready. Those who are not ready to go through radical changes and evolution will be able to locate themselves. Now that's pretty interesting, right? Because we've talked about this a number of times that we can't go around chasing people down and trying to wake them up, that everybody is actually going to have their time and their place and it's predetermined. We all have a path that we're walking and an initiation. 
signposts or checkpoints on our evolutionary journey as a soul here in flesh. So this is pretty cool because these limitations are kept in place so that those who are not ready to go through radical changes in evolution will be able to locate themselves still. And that's like we're never actually going to lose ourselves no matter where we are. We're always going to keep it moving basically. But then there are those who cut through every limitation, break every law by the sheer power of their inner gaze, their presence, their magical will. This is exactly what I was saying, Uranus, right? And of course, Uranus is not retrograde, but to all of those people out there who have Uranus retrograde in their natal chart, you know what's up. Like, it's all about breaking every single rule that you can possibly break just because you can. And Uranus in Aries right now is that rebellious standing up for oneself, making the changes and transformation in the most drastic and shocking and alternative ways possible, creating a brand new system. That's the energy of Uranus is to literally destroy old systems in order to birth new ones. And that is what this is about because there are those who will cut through every limitation and break every law by the sheer power of their inner gaze, their presence and their magical will. Yes, yes, yes. They cut loose worlds that have been apart, flood together. When they cut loose worlds that have been apart, flood together. This is true because obviously we're blending the higher and lower dimensions to ascend. We are creating a harmonic convergence instead of the harmonic dissonance that has been going on for quite a while. This is a force of awareness that seeks to bridge, to meditate, to connect, to bear messages back and forth. And absolutely, I'm, all of these aspects that are going on in the sky have been initiating us to really communicate and seek awareness, bridge worlds, bridge gaps, come together, form community, transform. A mission or great task is involved to let the future flood through, to repolarize the fractal fractured world towards wholeness one hundo yes this is our great mission and our great task we are repolarizing all these fra fractured pieces to create the whole again and that's so awesome because we are getting this energy of interconnectedness and this connected consciousness that brings together the feeling world of the interconnectedness between Gemini and Cancer. So it's pretty cool. A sensibility made up of equal parts, daring and skill. Yes, that's what I was just saying. We need that Gemini energy to be daring and we need the skill of the emotional cultivation that Cancer provides us. The daring is afraid of nothing and nobody. The skill embodies the daring in action. This is really profound because of course, the daring is afraid of nothing and nobody. We need that energy and the skill embodies the daring in action. So taking action because we have released our fear. This is what I was saying about not going into such emotional protection. Don't be so guarded with your vulnerability. Try to open up and allow yourself that sensuality, that sensibility, and that intrigue that Cancer Energy has to really just stir up these magnetic qualities and give the passions a new name as Mars makes this transit. This is going to be a really powerful part. A perfect combination to catalyze and spark and make inevitable the cosmic forces bringing their imprint to bear upon the outer physical existence just as though this is what we do around here and why not absolutely and it's just a constant reminder to not take things personally whether it's in your own life whether it's something that i wind up saying here that you wind up taking as a personal knock not my issue it's not anyone's issue whenever we become sensitive based on any sort of interactions whether there are intimate partnerships our friends our family our co-workers because everybody is processing through their filter everybody is expressing their own energy and just as you should be allowed to everyone should be allowed to 
So this perfect combination of the catalyst that sparks and make inevitable the cosmic forces, which brings their imprint to bear upon our physical existence, just as though it is what we do around here and why not, is because we're not worried about if someone says something or does something that's going to harm us. We are strong enough within our own emotional convictions that we can see our own value, trust our own worth, know our own worth, and keep on with what we have planned for ourselves, what we know our own destiny to be. It doesn't have to include others in the same ways that we have previously thought that it did. And this is our opportunity to really take all of these lessons and apply them it's so nice that today has a lot of the same similar energy as yesterday. It's just that we have a lot of transformation with Mars into Cancer. And also, in a few days, Mercury is going to wind up transiting into Gemini, its home sign. And this is absolutely going to shift gears in the mental sphere. We'll get to that, but this is a shift in our emotional gears so let's see the moon at 22 degrees of libra today is a ancient glass veil perfectly preserved vial perfectly preserved soul memory intensively held to ancient faculties a stunning quality of still feeling the way people felt a very long time ago a super sensitivity hidden and protected disguised and played off of Underneath, being vastly in tune with realms of existence, places and times to others that others are remote, but that to you are closer than close. Your unsurpassed ability to bring other realities into this world faithfully, accurately, and dispassionately has a dazzling array of accompanying treasures, which include feeling vitality, immune to con contemporary egoism and having no problem at all imagining and bringing to life absolutely everything a repository of timeless knowledge to draw upon yet it is self-replenishing the bottomless well of source knowingness unaffected by time by circumstance or by any changes you are going through riches that bear integrity and conviction and quickly disappear out of view when called to compromise or compete. It is all inside and it is complete. And it is so very true. Perfect degree for the moon having such positive aspects, the trine to the sun, the conjunction of Spica and Arcturus, as well as still connected to that Jupiter energy so lots of euphoria, lots of sharing, lots of caring, and lots of support with also lots of blessings and luck and connecting with our friends, our family, and our intimate partners, just anyone that you really love sharing time with. This is still a prominent energy from yesterday. So this ancient glass vial perfectly preserved what's in it the soul memories of course right intensively held in ancient faculties and this is pretty positive also because libra really rules that energy of ma'at which brings us to truth righteousness and balance and it's a stunning quality that's still feeling the way people felt a very long time ago because these 42 universal laws of Ma'at are very strong that we not only need to do good to others, but we need to do good to ourselves, love ourselves, speak to ourselves well, really honor ourselves so that we are in the proper vibration to do the same for others. If you speak well to yourself, you will speak well to everyone else. It's just a byproduct. A super sensitivity hidden and protected, disguised and played off. And that's actually something that I mentioned yesterday about being reminiscent of starseed energy. Starseeds are just naturally super sensitive, much more empathic, tuned into the cosmic vibrations, and also just have a lot higher knowing from the get-go. 
So that can be super sensitive on their parts and it can be a part of self that becomes hidden and disguised and played off. Underneath being vastly in tune with realms of existence, places and times that others are remote, to others are remote, but that to you are closer than close. Such a huge uh, um, statement of the starseed vibration once again because to starseeds and my workers, walk-ins, it's so clear. It's so clear and obvious and has never been a question about what's really going on or how the universe actually functions, what's up with the cosmic energy. But to everybody else, it's just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, you're crazy. So, yeah, we go through that. Your unsuppressed ability to bring other realities into this world faithfully, accurately, and dispassionately has a dazzling array of accompanying treasures, which include feeling vitality, vitally immune to contemporary egoism and having no problem at all, imagining and bringing life absolutely anything, bringing to life absolutely anything. And that is what's up. Because obviously if we don't let all of our multiple realities that exist within us be suppressed and we stay with this accurate, dazzling array that accompanies all of our treasures and doesn't, you know, gives us immunity to contemporary egoism, we have no problem imagining and actually manifesting into creation, physical creation, absolutely anything. And that's super freaking duper, if you ask me, a repository of timeless knowledge to draw from, yet it is self-replenishing, the bottomless well of source knowingness, unaffected by time, by circumstances, or by any changes you go through. Yes, holding on to that timeless knowledge without having any sort of discouragement in the fact that it's taken a long time for consciousness to get to this point. But whenever we're steadfast and we keep on doing it, it just keeps on illuminating and spreading. Riches that bear integrity and conviction and quickly disappear out of view when called to compromise or compete. It is all inside and it is complete and so very true. Yes, we don't need to compromise. We don't need to compete, but we do need to hold on to our integrity and our conviction. And these are what's going to lead us to the right place at the right time all the time. And this is what is so complete and true within us and obviously what else do you really need, right? If we're really taking into consideration the messages of the retrograde planets, Jupiter, seek your truth, trust your inner knowing. Saturn, practice your spiritual integrity, always operate from discipline and wisdom. And Pluto, gain, regain your psychic abilities, your super psychic powers, Make sure that you're connected to your super consciousness and in a witnessing state where you're not so attached that you're being drugged into the underworld, that you're really projecting into the higher vibrations of lifting yourself and others out of the struggle. So I am actually still doing the Pluto retrograde reading that goes into the transit of Pluto retrograde until September 29th. So you still have a lot of time to utilize this energy I look at your natal, your progressed, and your draconic chart. Go into the ages based on the procession of the equinox. Really help you to access those super consciousness memories that have to do with all of your lifetime's worth of psychic powers. And also, I have added starseed astrology to my list of services. Not sure how much longer I'm going to be doing it because it's a tremendous amount of work. But for the time being, I will, maybe about another week or so. So take advantage of it if you would like to. And I wish you all such a beautiful day. Just carry on on the happy vibration from yesterday. Manifest it into the, today's presence. Just bring a bit more emotional sensuality to everything that you do, all of your projects, and really just see them transform. And I love you so much. Job bless. Right.